Two little mice fell into a bucket of cream. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned, but the second mouse, he struggled so hard that he eventually churned that cream into butter. And he walked out. Amen. Welcome to Successful Dropout. This podcast is for the outliers, the innovators, the rebels, those that dare to dream and act on their dreams. I'm your host, Kylan Ginger. Join me as we find out what it takes to drop out, grind, and succeed. What's up, fam squad? I've got some pretty exciting news. If you listen to the podcast much, you know we've been building a pretty vibrant community of truly, truly extraordinary people who have committed to an unconventional route through life. The Successful Dropout audience has been growing a lot, and I get a lot of people reaching out to me now with all sorts of questions regarding education, dropping out, opting out, entrepreneurship, resources, networking, etc. So much so that I decided it was time to create a more accessible community on Facebook so that we can all ask and answer these kinds of questions together, as well as celebrate our successes and encourage each other during um, inevitable adversity. So I've created a closed Facebook group, and I want to invite you to join it. If you follow Successful Dropout, if you resonate with our philosophy and want to help me grow this thriving community, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group. This community is for the rebels, the outliers, the innovators, the doers, and those who dare to dream and act on their dreams. If you're a dropout, an opt-out, if you're thinking about doing one of those things, if you're a parent, even if you aren't any of those things and you graduated school, I want to invite you to join. All that matters is that you resonate with the successful dropout philosophy and that you enter the group with the intention to provide value to the other members and not just receive value yourself. Again, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group to request admission. Once you're a part of the group, introduce yourself and get involved and I'll see you there. What is up, successful dropouts? Get stoked because today on the show we have Jimmy Tomzak. Jimmy lives to inspire. He's launched multiple creative ventures, commercialized inventions, and built a rich network of personal and professional relationships. His work has earned awards, including recognition as a Crane's Detroit Business 20 in their 20s honoree, a Maker Fair Blue Ribbon, plus honors from organizations like the Elks National Foundation, where he was named Alum of the Year. Jimmy's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Entrepreneur Magazine, CNN, and other prominent media. His new book, Lakeside and Tide, hit top 100 on Amazon Kindle and number one in its category. Awesome. Uh, Jimmy is an author and a speaker who tells his story to audiences internationally. He recently gave the TED Talk, Living Your Best Life Now Starts Today, which I watched about half of um, just before we got on this, and I'll finish the other half at lunch here. But um, Jimmy, that's the intro I have for you, man. But tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Kylan, thank you. Uh, Great to be on the show, and what a great intro. Thank you so much. (laughs) Good to have you. Yes, sir. So thank you for that. Uh, The latest and greatest is, of course, my book. I'd say that the biggest project I've had bubbling right now is actually recording the audio book, which is perfect because we're on this audio interview. And man, have I learned a lot in that process. I'm actually the one reading it. And (laughs) and it's it's one of the I'd recommend it to anybody. Somebody else was writing a book and I actually recommend it. I'm like, did you read it out loud? And it's like, no, I didn't even think of that. And I'm like, you need to read it out loud. Uh, (laughs) Why? Uh, before my book went to press, my editor had reviewed it twice. I had reviewed it more times than I care to count. Uh, but I read it aloud while recording it on my iPhone the night before it was going to the printer. And I found, I kid you not, 10 errors. Now these were minor, minor things, you know, a, a period in the wrong place or an extra, cr- like so micro, but when you read it out loud and you go that deep, you'll find things that you would never find before. And, uh, I'd recommend something like that for anybody. Uh, that's a good point. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. So Lakeside and Tide, though, I'm interested just because of the title, what it's about, because we were just talking before this. You said, you mentioned you just bought a place on, I think it was Lake Michigan, and, and I live on a lake or near one as well. So what, what's what's the book about? Yeah, so I was just going to say, yeah, thanks for that. Um, I love talking with people, learning their story, and, and thanks for hearing mine, too. Yeah, we just got a place on Lake Michigan. And it's so cool to find other like-minded people, just like the listener, the sh- listeners of the show 
are thinking about who else they can connect with in their own network and looking up to folks like you or I or other guests that you've had on the show, that's you know, that's what life's about. It's actually what my book is about too. So the subtitle uh, for Lakeside and Tide is Inspiration for Living Your Best Life Now. So what that means is that uh, kind of my thesis for that is you have these equally high highs and equally low lows that we'll experience in this cliche roller coaster of entrepreneurship or just even day-to-day life. But what I realize is I don't need to constantly chase the high and avoid the pain of the low. I can just embrace both to live my best existence. Hmm. And in sharing that vision with other people, I believe that they can do the same. And so these are these, uh, you know, big picture concepts that if you just embrace that mindset of abundance and gratitude, and forgiveness, and and pay it forward, uh, you're going to have great people around you, and you're going to do great things. Yeah, so I mean, what you mentioned about embracing the high and also embracing the low, I think that's pretty powerful, because I feel like that's something that I've just recently been able to get a lot better at in the last probably two years or so, um, and it's brought me a lot of peace, you know, because I'm a real, like, A-type personality. I like to really, you know, get at things and and accomplish stuff, and I I like to see and and feel like I'm being successful. Obviously, with entrepreneurship, that's not always the case, and so sometimes you can take yourself or your failures a little too seriously when you're having a, a tough time, but just, so you're saying, you know, just being able to embrace, like, yeah, sometimes you're going to fail, and it's like, it's it's a part of the, the process, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, there, there are no right or wrong answers, and you're going to have to find your own path and embrace the failures as much as you do the successes. And mm-hmm. a lot of times, if you make those more mistakes faster, or the fastest way through the decision-making process is going to get you more results, right? Because I've been an entrepreneur, I didn't call it entrepreneurship when I was you know, 12 years old or 15 years old, you know, it's just, it's just hustling when you've got, you know, you're mowing your neighbor's lawn and the next thing you know, you have 10 customers, right? That's, that's just, you know, well, I'd rather not work at McDonald's. That's what that is. But when it becomes entrepreneurship, when you're launching an actual business, when you have contractors or employees or other people that, you know, matter to the results of your business and matter as, as human beings, you know, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. But if you center around those values morals and ethics that are rock solid and unquestionable, that's truly where it begins to matter, right? Because the most successful entrepreneurs in my mind and the people that I hold the close to me have the highest integrity. Gotcha. And so, so you are, we were discussing before we started the interview here, you're not technically a dropout. And you know, if, if anybody's been listening to the show for even just a few episodes, you know that that is not hard criteria for being on the show or even being part of the successful dropout community, but it's more an acceptance of the successful dropout philosophy. But, um, you know, I'd be curious if you, if you kind of told us Told us about that. You know, what 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 was your experience with education um, and graduating, and and would you have done you know anything differently? Do, do you feel like it helped uh, with your entrepreneurial journey? Maybe talk about that a bit. Yes, thank you actually for transitioning to that uh, because yes, I am not a dropout. I have a bachelor of science in neuroscience from the University of Michigan, <laughs> so I didn't drop out of that. But I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that because I did massively alter my life plan uh, of, of becoming a doctor. You wonder why I studied neuroscience. I was going to be a, a pediatric neurosurgeon. I dropped out of that. That's one thing. But really, in thinking about this show and how I could add the most value to the people that are listening, um, I thought of three massive things that I've dropped out of. Okay, number one, yeah. a life plan. Number two, limiting beliefs. And number three, expectation. And I can go a little bit deeper on these and unpack them a little bit, but just to to say it one more time because it's that important, I dropped out of having a life plan. You can't plan your life, and this is talking, this is coming from a serial planner who I have things planned out and and calendar and everything else like that, and I still do, but your (laughs) life plan, life will hand you all the everything and you'll have to figure it out, right? (laughs) Similarly, that number two, the limiting beliefs part, uh, saying, oh, I can't do that, I can't drop out, I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, I've never said that. I say, yes, I can. Here's how. And if I don't know how, I go learn it. 
And I, I'd say that's one of my superpowers or frankly just one of the things that I love doing the most is learning new things. Sometimes that's to my detriment and that'll get to number three here with regard to expectation. In fact, when I was writing some notes down on how I could like talk about some of these things during this episode, I didn't have a number three. I'm like, what's the third thing I dropped out of? I don't know. <laughs> well, expectation, right? And, and uh, my, my partner gives me a lot of pushback on this because if I go into a thing whatever from a it could be a fun thing we were just at um michigan's regional burning man called lakes of fire um which oh, was no a, an, yeah an amazing experience i'd never been to a regional burn this is somebody who's been to burning I, i've been to burning man uh, four times myself Are you okay burning? i was gonna i was gonna ask no like my buddy and i actually my business partner and i have wanted to go for a couple of years so you now that'd be interesting to talk about what that's like <laughs> it seems just happy crazy. to crazy yes. yes 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 so uh Nonetheless, though, my expectations of what I thought that would be versus what it was, there were just some different things. Like I said, you can't plan for it. We were actually excited because unlike the burn where we're flying in and trying to pack and integrate with the camp and all this other stuff, we literally had like everything we needed to have this amazing camp because I've been camping, you know, in the more formal sense of, uh, you know, going on a camp trip to the woods or whatever since Mm -hmm. I was like two or three years old. Right. So I have I have camping locked down and this, you know, we right felt on. like we were glamping. We had my family's pop up and inverters and subwoofers and lights and just, I mean like everything. <laughs> right. And we're thinking we're, yeah. we're, we're plugging into open camping. Open camping wasn't even open when we got there. Uh, it was closed. It was full. They're like, so we don't know where we're going to put you, but you're here. Good job. <laughs> so little things like that. It all worked out. It worked out in the most amazing way. A friend that uh, a friend introduced me to when we got there, like, make sure you guys meet while you're there. I kid you not, we're, like, driving with one of the other people that got in our car to, like, find a different place to camp. And this person comes up to my window of the car and says, hey, are you Jimmy? And I say, hey, you know, are you – and we have this this conversation. Like, I'm like, whoa, you're who I was supposed to meet here, and I'm already meeting you, and I haven't even been here five minutes. Like, how awesome is that? And that's how the universe provides – this, this sense of uh, abundance and opportunity that is accessible and always there should you choose to accept it. And so letting go of expectation, uh, while you may feel like you're losing something, you're actually gaining so much more. And so I'm happy to unpack any of those or talk a little bit about why I chose not to go to med school and instead invented a product and ended up uh, being selected to appear in tape for Shark Tank to you know all these other things that have led me on my life process uh, because you know, if if you don't have to do it yourself for your listeners, I, you know they don't they don't have to make the same mistakes. You can you'll make plenty of mistakes, but you don't have to make the same mistakes that somebody else already you know experienced, unless you just like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I I love it, man. I kind of want to try to unpack all of them honestly. I mean, so you know, life plan, limiting beliefs, expectations, you know, all things you dropped out from. Um, I mean. Can we start with the life plan just just briefly? I want to talk about um, – because I, I think that's really important. I definitely – when I was younger, I feel, I feel like if you go read like my journal when I was like 12 through 18, so much of the – so many of the entries are about like – I was trying to figure out what I was going to do for the rest of my life and like trying to lay out a 10, 20 year plan. And then there's an entry where I had a, like I had it all figured out. And then the next entry, it's like, I'm so frustrated right now because I had a conversation with one of my best friends and, and he like has convinced me not to do this thing. And now I'm thinking I want to do this other thing. And I thought I had it all figured out. It's so frustrating. But, um, so with the life plan, you, you obviously wanted to become a doctor, I guess. What, what made you realize that you know you didn't quite have all that figured out and you wanted to be an entrepreneur instead? Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not an advocate for not planning, but having a preconceived notion of how it should always work or how it's going to be and then being very upset about it if it doesn't work out that way is what I'm trying to get at. Just like my number two and number three are limiting beliefs and expectations that those go hand in hand even with the first one. So to make it make sense, uh, this this life plan, I've always been uh, very, very sharp, quick with science, math, all these other things. Oh, you should be a doctor, right? Because if you grew up in, in an average family or something like that, you know, what are the options for the pinnacle of success to the, I don't know, the modern family or something? You're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer or whatever that, you know, that would make your parents proud. That's great, right? Uh, and, and it, and it would, and it did. And, oh, that makes, you know, that makes perfect sense. You know, you're going to have the finances taken care of. You're always going to have a job. You have the prestige associated with it. Why would you give that up? Right. 
So what I really found was that a lot of times if you're making a choice based on um, the limited knowledge and, and resources or vision or view or people that you hang out with is based on, you're not going to be able to make the same decisions, right? Because if, if you told me now 10 years plus after making sort of that decision, I mean, it's not quite that long, but I, you know, I started college in 2006. And if you said 10 years from now, you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're going to have a book and you're going to, you know, own this and you're going to do passive income and you're going to, you know, I don't know if I would have believed, like actually believed mm -hmm. any of that because it was not part of my plan. It was not in the cards and it's, you know, it's, it certainly wasn't easy. Uh, right. But there's a great, I, I won't take up any more time on the interview to talk about why entrepreneurship versus med school, but I'll say that there's a great article out there. I think it's a, a Quora uh, question, actually, and you can add this to your resources section because everybody should know about it. But yep. just Qu like my thing is, if you don't know something, just Google the answer to it. And this should be so obvious, but it baffles me the number of people that don't do it. I was trying to do a real estate deal and I was thinking, man, I should talk to an attorney about that. And I'm like, wait a second. Why would I talk to an attorney about it if I can just Google it? Same thing with starting a business. If, if another friend's trying yeah. to advise like, oh, best resources for that. Or should I drop out? Google, should I drop out? And you'll know, uh, like you'll have this, they'll say, write a tea table or this. They'll do this. They'll say far more than, than I ever could in this brief. That we're, we're providing is is giving you those resources and then letting letting uh, the listeners go do their homework right because um, listening to this podcast is amazing but it's not going to get you results related to what you want for your reason for dropping out so ultimately you know in, in recommending that quora mm -hmm. question um, they actually break down the lifetime value of an md degree versus doing literally anything else um, even even a traditional career path right because when you go when you're going to be a doctor there's you know, four years of college, then four years of med medical school, then you're technically a doctor, but you can't practice because you're going to do at least one to two years of residency, probably more like three to five, if not more, especially in the in the space that I was going to be in. So neurosurgery, that's when you're a doctor, when you're literally not actually a doctor practicing whatever until you're like 40 years old. That would mean that I, you know, I'm, I'm not even 30 <laughs> right now. So I would still be going to school and doing all this stuff uh, for another 10 years before I like began and so that kind of blows your mind so they do it they do it with results and charts and things like that to show what it actually costs you know you're 40 years old you have three hundred thousand dollars in debt and you know you're just beginning but the the cool thing about dropping out of something like that or dropping into whatever you do choose to do is that that path and process that you get to constantly and consistently choose it and you do begin to value the micro moments of the in-between right so how important it is to right. enjoy the process as much as the outcome. Yeah. No, totally, man. And what's interesting too is what it sounds like what you're doing now with with, you know, entrepreneurship and and being an author and a speaker and, you know, real estate, all this stuff. Like school doesn't teach you how to do that necessarily. Like a, like the job that I have right now didn't really exist in the school system as, as like an option or something that you could study or anything like that. So you got to realize when you are in the, kind of this formal schooling system, there's a lot of other options out there that, that, that are great options that maybe you're not being presented with. And instead you just have the typical, yeah, lawyer, doctor, these are sort of the higher tier, um, you know, career paths you can take. But, um, the, the second one interests me, you know, dropping out of limiting beliefs. I wonder, do you have any advice for our listeners on how to, because belief, beliefs can be tricky. A lot of times you can believe something I, I feel like without even really knowing that you believe it. Cause some beliefs are kind of the lens that we see the, the world through. And, and a lot of the times we might not even be able to articulate them, but they, they determine like the way we make our decisions and like what, what our brain filters through, you know, through what we see in the world. Do you have any advice for anybody on how to kind of figure out what their limiting beliefs might, might be and then deal with that? Or, or maybe what were some that you had um, that you dropped? dropped sure. Basically? So beliefs and values are very highly correlated, right? And so a lot of times mm -hmm. to know what you believe you have to know what you value. 
And so this could be as simple as Googling, um, what are my, like, what are my values? I'm trying to think there's, there's a lot of, just like any of this stuff, there's a lot of resources out there that'll, it'll give you a spreadsheet and you can just rank all these different things or it'll ask you a quiz and then the quiz will spit out, you know, your top 10 values, your top five values. Uh, Clifton, Clifton Strengths Finder, right. um, that's an, a book you can buy on Amazon. Make sure you get it with the code so you can take, you know, the test or just go on Amazon and buy the code and then take it and then you don't even need the book. Uh, but Clifton Strengths Finder will tell you, you know, your top five strengths uh, according to their systems and processes and research. And, you know, so mine are like intellect, intellectualization. Uh, wow, I sound so intellectual when I can actually say the word. Um, command, uh, right, like creativity, <laughs> these different things that, you know, go far in entrepreneurship, but might not go mm-hmm. so far in a traditional path, right? And so there are no right or wrong answers. I'm not saying that uh, being a doc, you know, we, we need people to heal, you know, your entrepreneurial blunders, right? Oh, yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna sure I'll, I'll cut the tree down myself, you know, okay, <laughs> right? So if you if you get in a serious accident or whatever, you're going to want the best, highest and most capable doctor there, uh, not somebody that's there because they're doing it because they wanted a paycheck or they wanted, you know, job security or something. No, you want the highest and best, True. most capable person that can do that. And so we will always need uh, people like that, just like we'll always need uh, the full spectrum of jobs and op- opportunities that exist. Although for people that are listening, that's changing so much and more and more you're responsible for your own uh, outcomes, obviously. And so the main thing being that Dr. Mm-hmm. Lawyer and these other things, they have, if you do this, then you get that. So like an algebra equation yep. or something, you, you plug in this and you get that. If you get you know this score on your MCAT and this GPA and you did this and this checklist and whatever, you will do and then apply for this. You can go through that. In entrepreneurship, it's not there unless you create it. And so with respect to limiting beliefs, yep. uh, if you think something, then it's going to basically be that. I mean, don't quote that exactly, but what I'm saying is if you don't believe in yourself, as a dropout or as a human, then it's not going to matter because no one else is going to believe in your business as much as you do. No one else is going to believe in my book as much as I do. I mean, yes, there's fans and yes, there's mm-hmm. champions and yes, there's so many amazing people in my life that even uh, were responsible for this book even being in the world. And I have so much gratitude for that. But I still believe that I believe in it more than anyone else in the world. right? And as soon as that's not the case, I'm probably yeah. doing the wrong thing. And as soon as that's the case with with yourself or a listener, then you're you're probably not doing something quite right. Yeah, no, I I love that man. And as you were talking about that, uh, it, it it spur or uh, oh, it brought something to to mind that actually it was an exercise that I, that Tony Robbins suggested that I did once. And I don't mean to to hog the mic, but I I felt like this was really powerful. I I did this probably a year ago now. Um, it, I think a helpful thing to do with this is to think, um, think in terms of of negative and positive beliefs too, and I think that's a little more helpful in maybe bringing some actual beliefs to to our mind that we have. Um, and, and so the the thing I did is I wrote, I got on just a blank word document, and I wrote down a list of all the positive beliefs, the things that I truly believe about myself, stuff that I've heard you know people say about me a lot. Um, you you kind of have a general sense for what people view you as and what your strengths and, and positive qualities and beliefs about yourself are. Um, uh, and then on the flip side, you know, underneath that, I started to write down all the negative beliefs that that I can think of that I have about myself. And that was, was tough. You know, it took me a sec to kind of think about some of these things. But at the end of the day, it was like the act of writing that down on a piece of paper or typing it out on a document and seeing it there, some of these negative beliefs. And, it, you know, it's like, it's silly stuff. Like one of them was like, one of them, and this was like a year and a half ago, I remember one of them was, uh, I believe that I'm always jumping from venture to venture before it can actually turn into like a great thing. And that because I do this, I'm never going to be as successful as I hope to be. That was like a belief that, a negative belief that I, discovered I, I had about myself when I sat down enough with enough time to think about it. And it was like an emotional process. I, I like, yeah, it was a pretty emotional process, but, um, you can kind of take those and one by one kind of work through them in your mind. And, 
I, you know, I don't know. Does that make sense? Have you ever done anything like that? My gosh, my friend, yes, everything. I've done all all those things. Uh, no, I'm 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 sort of laughing at at myself thinking of all the the, the crazy self optimization tools that I've done, used, built, or otherwise. Uh, do them all. Yes, uh, your listeners should do exactly what you told, <laughs> and they should do ten other things like that until they understand themselves and what they're capable of. If you understand yourself and what you're capable of. Right then, you'll know whether you can do it or not do it. And there's so many yeah. uh, pieces under that too, right? So we're we're personally talking about it on like a personal development level. How can I self optimize? What do I believe that's yep. negative? What are energy drainers? So you can do the same or similar thing where you say, "Here's where I get energy in life." Right? You know, walking on the beach. You know, helping mm-hmm. someone do this. You know, starting a business, working on my deepest work, writing. <laughs> right? Here's energy drainers. You know, dealing with you know negative people, like having to work on this that I don't like, whatever those kinds of things and you can parse those out and then you can, can you can choose like wow if i get this much energy from this energy producing thing then i should probably do more of that and if this drains me and depletes me and makes it so i can't run a business then i need to make sure that whenever possible i don't go there <laughs> and if i do or if i have to you know to put that um, invisible jacket of of love around yourself and say that hey this is this is just you know another thing and then let's let's continue on and i'd say uh, a final thing, let me know if I'm going too fast, but on this this limiting belief thing is a financial limit or a limiting belief, mm-hmm. right? So we can fear failure. Yeah. Or, sorry, I'll say it more clearly. We can fear success as much as we can fear failure. And if that sounds kind of kooky, mm-hmm. actually think about it. If you're wildly successful, if the people listening to this show think about what actual success looks like to them, I'm talking about you know glitter and confetti and balloons and fame and fortune or whatever your highest dreams are, maybe they're not that because I realized that for me they weren't that and I had to let go of that as well. Uh, I'm still open to versions of that, but I realized that that was something that I thought I wanted, but I actually don't, right? Then you can step into a, a greater sense of yeah. you know what success what success actually means for you because I guarantee that the financial components will come up in launching a business right because the definition of a business has to do with buying and selling or you know those kinds of things right and there's so much associ- there's so much energy associated with money. That if you don't understand that now and then you get successful and then, then you're trying to figure it out, that's why there's so many people that have these, these challenges from the celebrity or these, this fall from grace kind of a thing <laughs> because money is just going to magnify all those challenges. So you'd be better served by just working on those challenges, be it uh, emotional, personal, psychological, with your family, any of those other things. Maybe that's some of the stuff that you could work on first before launching a business. And I only say that from experience because, you know, when you're trying to sit at Thanksgiving dinner or something and you're trying to think about like what orders you should ship instead, what, you know, how is that business actually serving you? And that's speaking (laughs) from me actually doing that, wondering like, ah, well, you know, no, set the boundaries, know all the things that you, you need to know, but don't limit that. You don't let that limit you from actually doing something, but make sure you're well qualified enough thinking about not only the present, but what success looks for like for you one year out, five years out, 10 years out, 30 years out, <laughs> and then be open to modifying that plan as as necessary. Dude, I, I freaking love that. I mean, for the longest time, success to me was, had 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 a dollar figure on it, and, and my goals consisted of, you know, make this much by X date and, and make this much by X, you know, age. And about f- three or four years ago, that quickly switched to lifestyle, you know, goals. I, I, I focused all of my goals around the kind of lifestyle I wanted to lead instead of necessarily the money I made. And I, I actually took some time to write down. And I love that you're saying like, do a bunch of stuff, you know, d- like do a bunch of different exercises to figure out like who you are. I mean, self-knowledge is the basis of all education, I think. And so I, I actually sat down once and figured out this is how, to live my ideal lifestyle. These are all the things that I want to have and, and this is the lifestyle I want. I actually figured out how much money I need to make per month to provide that. And it was way less than, than I'd assumed. And yeah, so let, and, uh, thanks so for that. Let's unpack I, that I think, a little Yeah, uh, because I'll share something, but I'm curious. So what process did you use? Did you self create a spreadsheet that gave you that? Did you use somebody else's tool? How did you get that number? 
Uh, it was just in my, my journal, honestly. Uh, it was one morning yep. I just sat down with my wife and we just said, okay, in our ideal world, the kind of lifestyle we want to lead, what what are the things that we want? So we started listing those and then we started putting a dollar amount to them. Okay, we want to have these yep. kinds of vehicles. Okay, well, that's going to cost about this much per month. So we just figure all that out and then you've got you know your, your sum total at the bottom and it was a lot less than than we thought to reach our so ideal I lifestyle. So I want to celebrate you and take a moment, like literally just pause for a second. You don't have to pause the recording. But listeners, you, me, everybody's just going to pause for a second. We're going to take a deep breath. Awesome. That was a dramatic pause. I, I do advocate for breathing and all this other stuff. But that was a dramatic pause because that's how powerful that exercise that you do is. And I want, I want people to note that and mm. highlight it. And if you're just casually listening to this in the car or while you're cooking, no, actually pause the recording, stop, go write it down, note to self, to-do list, whatever. Uh, fully consider like what success is to me. Because if you don't know that, and then like actually break that down from finance to how I spend my time to all these different things. Uh, because yes, to go back to the first thing that we said, you can't uh, plan everything out and all these other things. But to have even a sense of how that works or looks is so, so powerful. So for you, you built it from the sort of bottom up, uh, you know, he, here's the little pieces and putting it together. I actually did a version of this a couple years ago and I actually attribute my present success to it kind of from the top down. And, and because of this conversation, I think it's really cool because I've been toying about how to package and provide that to people that could that could benefit from it. And I did a version of that. I just haven't been able to give the full time and attention to it given the other projects that I have going on. But this is bubbling. And if listeners are, are listening, they can look up Jimmy Tomzak and Google it and kind of understand more about that path and process. But what I mean is that I had this concept for for your life being lucky and what it would look like if you won the lotto, right? Because a lot of entrepreneurs are chasing this lotto, you know, oh yeah, money, fame, whatever perspective, which is great. But what would it actually look like? Yeah. You just hit the Powerball, 300 million. What are you going to do with that money? It'd be great to like win it and then, oh, well, I don't know <laughs> what I would do. Let me think about it now. But now you have the money, so the answer is different. Now you don't have the money. You don't have the success. You're wherever you're at right now. Maybe you are successful already and you just want to be more successful. Maybe you've had, you have privileges and opportunities that you haven't even recognized because you're, you're kind of blind to it because we all are, right? Even if we're born in, in poverty, we can't mm -hmm. understand what it's like to have, um, you know, a trust fund or, or be rich or have this one million dollar net worth or something. It that's what people from the other side. Well, you know, they can't understand what it would be like to be in poverty or to not have the basic resources available to level up, right? And so that inability to put yourself in the other person's shoes can kind of kind of limit it. But back to what I was what I was saying, what we were saying about how to unpack these things is that I created this process. For if you have this, you know, whatever the number is, it doesn't matter, make it high enough so that you're not limiting yourself. And write down all those things that you would have, but not just okay. the things that you have, the things that you would do, the places that you go, who you would spend time with, how you would spend time. And I'll pause and highlight mm -hmm. those last two questions because they're probably the most important ones. Who would you spend your time with? And how would you spend your time? And the answers to those two questions can kind of fill in a lot of the other stuff, right? And again, like you, I did the same thing. And I thought, hmm, I literally journaled on this for like a couple hours, you know, no limits. And I'm still not near this 300 million or whatever number. And again, the number didn't matter because later I unpacked that a little bit more. I put it into a spreadsheet. I added up the dollar amounts. I divided it to my hourly rate and to how much I need to make per day or per month or all these other things. And I found that it was a, still a, a very small, a uh, very modest number. And then, then when I actually took out these like luxury things that absolutely aren't essential because things don't make people happy, right? Experiences do or spending quality time with people you care about. That's truly what matters. So when I unpacked a lot of this, I thought that the highest value, yep. again, because you can do some, some Excel wizardry and you can rate it and then you, it'll, bo it'll bounce to the top. You laugh, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> you laugh, but you know. You can do some Excel stuff yep. so it'll, it'll sort it and it'll say <laughs> – cool, here's the thing that's most important to me right now. And I found that all those things were basically non-monetary things. They become easier when the money's figured out, but that's why you have to figure out the financial component yeah. to it. But, you know, to, to avoid being too uh, long-winded here, 
you know, it, you if you if you're trying to launch a business, you know, there's a couple maybe things you need, right? An idea, a concept, whatever. The people who execute it, and then an understanding or the capital to actually make it happen, or that it's self sustaining in the sense that you sell it, and then that causes the other capital to happen. And for the longest time, I was so centered Mm -hmm. on the financial components of it. How does this work from a monetary component? Do we have enough money to even start it? Do we have this? Do we have that? Do we have what? Or the idea component of it. Man, I'm an ideas guy. I love to learn. I love to think. I love to unpack all these (laughs) things. Like I I literally had a journal of, of, of crazy ideas that would never work. The funny thing is that half of those ideas have now been commercialized since the, the 10 years that I've, that I've had that. But anyway, the people, the idea and the money, the people are actually most important and unless you're thinking about it in terms of how can this scale how can i have the largest impact or the impact that i really need to make within this context of this idea the people actually matter most and and a lot of entrepreneurs Hmm. just starting out might be focused on me 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 or the idea or the concept or the finances of what you know the opportunity is and you forget about you know, your your brother or your neighbor or your mom or your sister or your dog or, you know, the friends or the reason why you're doing it in the first place. Because if you get to this level of success and then you're you're lonely and, you know, who, you know who's going to enjoy that yacht with you now? You know, people that just want you because you have that or something? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So you have to fully consider all those <laughs> all those things. And, and that's, that's what my book's about. I actually unpack a version of that in my book. I unpack some of these planning concepts in, in my book. And, and really offer as much value as possible because if you learn and then you execute, you're going to have results. Dude, I, I love all that so much. I mean, that's just, it's absolutely gold and, and uh, can't wait to put your, your book in the show notes there. And I'd suggest people go check that out. Um, you know, I, I'll need to as well. But man, it's, it's like there, there are a number of, of studies and, and um, you know, research projects and stuff that, that have been done with, with people throughout the years on what makes them happy and, and feel truly successful. And then, you know, also people who are, are close to death, you know, and, and one of the main things is like what you said, the other people in their lives, their family and and the kind of relationships they foster. And, you know, no, nobody says that they wish they would have worked more or spent more hours in the office. Now, you know, granted, I think, you know, everybody knows that that's important. The younger you are, when you are young, you've got to spend a lot of time, you know, just putting in the the hard work and you've got to build something for yourself. But at the same time, I think like you were saying, Jimmy, to be able to always stay very conscious about what does success actually look like for you? And at the end of the day, you know, what's really going to make you happy? Because, um, you know, if, if you're doing something that's not making you happy, then really what's the what's the point? And I'll tell you an incredibly freeing experience for me was, was just, um, honestly, it was just a couple months ago. Um, realizing now it for the last, well, since 2013, I started my first business. And, and since then it's just been nonstop and we've worked, we've worked so hard and, and all of it almost from the beginning has been with the goal of creating just kind of our ideal lifestyle. And I don't have a desire to be a billionaire or even like, a, a multi multi millionaire, but um, you know, I have a certain idea of what success is like. And the other day, I realized, you know, I told my wife, if if we made five million dollars tomorrow, just like that, it was in our bank account. Like my lifestyle would not change much. Like I'd make a few more investments and and put that money to use and stuff. But as far as the relationships I have and the way I spend my time, where we live, um what we buy on a regular basis and use on a regular basis, that stuff just wouldn't change. And it was a very freeing feeling because uh, it just kind of puts to rest all these feelings like, oh, I've, I've got to earn more money or do this to earn more money. And it, and it becomes like, what can I do to like continue doing things that make me happy and doing work I love and doing work that makes other people happy? So Absolutely. And, and yeah. that's when you know you're doing the right thing, right? Because... A lot of people can use that. Okay, cool. You Mm -hmm. retire. Maybe you did choose a traditional career. Maybe there's a a random older listener that's coming up upon retirement and is uh, thinking about, you know, Mm -hmm. wow, what am I going to do with my time? That's totally true. I mean, yes, you can have all the money in the world, but you don't get more time, right? And so at a certain point, which I hope is sooner than later for anybody that's listening, you realize how valuable your time is and you wouldn't make, you wouldn't take a second to do something 
it's not bettering yourself or someone around you. Yeah, very true. Well, Jimmy, I would be really disappointed if we didn't talk about um, your sandals, basically. I don't know how else to put it because <laughs> I, I don't know that, that much about it yet, but I do know that that was kind of you know one of your main businesses. I don't know if that's still going on, but I just was, when I Googled your name, that's I saw a lot of articles and interviews about that. So uh, tell, tell us about that. I'm really curious. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. And I, I'm going to add the couple things that are going to add the most value to your listeners. Uh, so you're speaking of paper feet, which are minimalist sandals that are made from billboard vinyl. And this was my first, I guess you could say, real company. Not my first entrepreneurial thing, far from it, but truly something, the first thing that I tried to commit to and grow from idea in my head to you know global phenomena. I said if <laughs> if Crocs or Uggs or Toms or any of these other things – uh, Vibram's five fingers, if those can hit mainstream, then there's no reason why I can't do it. And that's what I set out to do. And I got pretty close, but I ultimately gave it up. So your your listeners, nobody can buy those right now. And all it is, is a good story. But that's, that's actually not true. All it is, is a good story. Tons and tons of learning experiences, right? <laughs> I had the equivalent yeah. of um, an MBA degree in the last six months of my college experience, where I kind of dropped out of this preconceived notions of what uh, you know, a bachelor of science would be for me. I started taking 20 credits. I did the program in entrepreneurship and, and leveraged all these university resources and business plan competitions and challenges and travel and scholarships and things like that to, to get as, as much as I could to grow this business and also to understand and meet the people that would help grow this business or, or those kinds of things. And so, um, you say that you Google my name and you saw things related to this, right? So you might see a picture of me, uh, shaking hands with Mark Cuban on Shark Tank or that you might see yeah. an Entrepreneur Magazine feature. That's because my premise was that if no one knows, no one cares. And mm -hmm. so I made it my point to help people know about it and help them care about it. Uh, and so I did anything that I could do to market, right? And so I, I, with all these press and media features and things like that, that became kind of my secret sauce and what I learned about marketing and brand strategy and naming and again i'm happy to help anyone uh with these things because it is something that i know a ton about it's not so much my focus right now but i just i love to do it and it's so easy for me that i you know there's no reason if someone needs help for it or if it's a consulting uh project or uh, you know a short-term engagement or a long-term engagement for the right opportunity or the right product i'm happy to do things like that because it, it adds so much value to what someone's doing if you're really good at spreadsheets and finance and project management, awesome. But you'll have to find someone complementary at whatever it is that you are not good at. Partner with them and then make it happen. And there's there's no right or wrong answers in how that could be done or not done. But yes, uh, the, the shoes were quite a fun journey. Uh, it involved multiple pivots and a new you know a product launch after that. But ultimately, I wound up that business because I found that sort of the reason for being in that in that business mm -hmm. i want in, in our tagline for that was to get outside and live hmm. right and so that became that was the mantra like i wanted these these thin sandals that were made from something that would otherwise end up in a landfill so we're saving the environment and we're also encouraging people to get outside and live you don't need you know hundred dollar shoes or all these different things you just need the very basics to go outside and enjoy yourself and i realized that well, shoot, if that's what I want to help people do, then there's a lot of different ways to be doing that. I don't necessarily need to have a product perspective. And, it, of course, people came to know me as Paper Feet Jimmy. I'm sure if you Google that, <laughs> stuff will stuff will pop up, right? Because it's very easy for people to grasp. And now some of the things that I'm doing aren't as easy. If I say, cool, Jimmy's an author. I have a book about this. You know, if I'm meeting my new neighbors at the new place we're at, you know, I can say something like that because they get it. Oh, cool, yeah, the, the new next-door neighbor is an author. <laughs> yeah, but if I told them that I'm involved in this, this, and that, and I also do consulting, and you know, I've, I've, I invest in some different things, and I and I do this, and by the way, did you know that for the average person, that's too much, and so you always want to make it as as easy as possible for people to understand, and so that takes a lot of self work and self care and other things to to fully grasp. But um, thanks for bringing it up because it was a huge part of my life from probably 2009 to 2013 or so, where you know it it, it changed the way. That I think I would say that the end exclamation point of that is that I dropped out from beliefs 
related to how I should run a business or why I should run a business or all those other things. And my, my, my life became so much richer after that mm-hmm. point, even, even if not monetarily so. And then the monetarily so part, you know, happens by definition of the way you're living. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love that, man. And I, I, uh, it's kind of a bummer because I have to. I have another interview I got to jump off on here soon, and and we've already gone about an hour. But um, I feel like there's a lot we didn't get to that I would like to to discuss. So we'll probably have to have you on the show again if you're <laughs> if you're down for that. <laughs> I'd love to, and and even so, if people can can reach out, my name is Jimmy Tomzak. If you just Google how that sounds, or Inspire Jimmy will also pop up because those are all my social handles. The website mm-hmm. has the contact info on it. The book is there. All this stuff is there. And if anybody has a specific question or a general question, again, Google it first. But then if there's if there's something quick where I can add value or something deeper, just reach out because I'm where I'm at because of the amazing people that have given their time and gifts uh, so that, that I could do what I've done. And yeah, I'd be happy to help you with your show again or anything else that I could do. Yeah, I think I'd love to have you on maybe for one of the Friday segments that are a little bit shorter, what we go more into depth on, on certain topics, because it really seems like like you're, you're good at really going into depth on a singular topic and, and hashing out some of the details. So I think that would be that would be really cool, man. And uh, but yeah, uh, let's see, you already told us the best way to kind of connect with you and we'll have that all in the show notes. I, I have one more question for you. Um, that I, I like to ask all my guests before they get off, but, um, there's actually two questions, but we have time for one of them. Um, what advice, what parting advice would you have for any of our listeners who are thinking of dropping out of college to per- pursue something more entrepreneurial, but they haven't quite made that step yet? Would you have any parting advice for them? Absolutely. Instead of asking yourself just how you're dropping out, cause that part's easy. Mm-hmm. Fully consider how you're dropping in right how relentless are you how much are you willing to commit if you're letting go of one thing what are you diving into so much deeper (laughs) i I love that i'm glad i asked you that last question (laughs) (laughs) you bet awesome well successful dropouts you've been hanging out with jimmy and kylan learning what it takes to drop out grind and succeed and remember you're the average of the five people you hang around the most so congratulations um for everything we talked about today head over to successfuldropout.com and type jimmy into the search bar and the show notes will pop right up and as always stay hungry stay foolish For more information about how to drop out, grind, and succeed, go to SuccessfulDropout.com. I also love questions. If you have a question about anything we talked about today, I want to hear from you. Go to SuccessfulDropout.com and click the Ask Me a Question link at the top of the page. Successful Dropouts, if you could go to iTunes and leave a positive rating and review, it would help this show out a lot. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on. But if you do that, it helps this podcast rank. It helps other people listen to it and gain value just like you have been. Thank you so much in advance.